They say you can tell when someone is pregnant because of their glow. But is this the same for animals? Every species has its own set of needs before they can reproduce. But just how different is one group from the next? Um, as she gets closer to foaling, she might start pacing around, be uncomfortable. Do zebras have the same functions as horses? What about gorillas and chimpanzees? Today, we'll be looking for these answers as we go over these 15 animals before giving birth. Signs your mare isn't horsing around. Raising and breeding horses has been a long tradition in many countries and cultures. They were a very dominant form of transportation for centuries after all. So if you've taken care of horses from birth, you might know a thing or two about the long and steady pregnancy process they go through. An infant horse, for instance, is called a foal. And did you know most foals are ready to walk immediately after birth? But we might be getting a bit ahead of ourselves. For starters, the average equine gestation period, which means horse pregnancy, often lasts around 340 days. That's basically a full year of waiting and preparation. But that long period also leaves a large gap of time where a new foal could be born. In order to get a more accurate timeline, there are many distinct behaviors that can be tracked. The first is a distended udder as the mare's mammary gland grows, which will only take place in the month leading up to a foal's birth. When the udder is full during the day, it could mean the foal is ready to come out and the mare is set to begin feeding their young. The mare will also show behavior changes like irritability and restlessness. If your pregnant horse won't stop pacing and suddenly decides to lie down, you better get ready for an experience of a lifetime. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? A newborn zebra takes a dip. The zebra, while sharing many similarities to horses, has its own physical needs and tendencies. They live in drastically different climates, often warmer and with scarcer resources, so their pregnancies can change to reflect these significant differences. Some zebras, such as gravy zebra, are really struggling to keep reproducing. Their population has dwindled down to fewer than 2,500 zebras in Africa, currently marking them for the endangered species list. Because of this, many zoos are bringing in these zebras to help out with their numbers providing tests and a safe environment for the animals to successfully reproduce. Zebras remain pregnant for an average of 12 to 13 months, which can lead to a lot of potential hazards for the mare and the foal. In an unusual situation that required humans to step in, a newborn zebra was birthed at Valencia Biopark in Spain, only to immediately stumble into a watering hole. What a terrible first experience for the newborn. Zebra infants often come out nimble and instinctive, ready to seize the world moments after being born and even begin running around within their first 15 minutes of life. But in this case, running around a small enclosure led the new zebra to a semi-deep pool used for drinking. The foal immediately charged in, unprepared for the consequences and likely wouldn't have made it without human interference. Thankfully, the zookeepers on hand were trained to handle the situation and made a daring save. You really can't predict what danger babies can get into. <laughs> the Longest Pregnancy The mighty elephant is known for its massive size, but that also means they produce massive offspring. Not every pregnant elephant goes through the same process. Their needs are based on their breed and location, but they do all go through the longest gestation process in the animal kingdom. An African elephant can be pregnant for up to 22 months, practically two full years. White Asian elephants, on the other hand, will tend to give birth after 18 to 20 months, which is still much longer than, say, a blue whale that lasts for 12 months, and much, much longer than a hamster that can give birth after only 16 days. But elephants aren't just holding on to their pregnancies because of their size. Although difficult to obtain, a lot of studies have been done on elephant hormones and chemical balances. Tested theories have shown that because of multiple temporary glands during pregnancy, baby elephants won't come out until their brains are near full development. Elephants generally only give birth to one calf at a time, with only a 1% chance of having twins. This supports the theory that all of their pregnant mother's nutrients and hormones are stressed to fully develop their infant, 
and with such developed brains, it's no wonder elephants never forget. Maybe these baby elephants will even remember their birth as adults. <coughs> Tall and heavy from birth, giraffes are a unique species for a whole list of reasons, and their birthing process is definitely included. For starters, giraffes are one of the few species that can give birth at any time in the year. They typically begin breeding around the age of 6 to 7, which may seem young to us, but not when you consider that their lifespan only reaches 25 years on average. Once impregnated, the gestation period will typically last around 15 months, which is still on the longer side of the animal kingdom, although not quite as long as an elephant. They also won't be able to give birth again for another 16 months afterwards. And if you are wondering how a giraffe gives birth, you might be surprised to know that it all happens while they're standing up. A newborn giraffe will often come out in what's called the Superman pose, with outstretched arms and legs. The offspring are born at such a large size, ranging around the 6-foot mark while weighing well over 100 pounds. If the mother giraffe were to give birth sitting or lying down, there's often the complication of the baby being smushed at birth due to its large size. But assuming everything goes well, the herd community of female giraffes will often take care of the tall and gangly newborn giraffe until it adjusts to everyday life. <laughs> An alternative to cows. Your typical buffalo may not have any wings, but they do produce a lot of other helpful resources for humans. Buffalo milk, much like cow milk, is one of the primary reasons people breed buffalo, and producing calves is a necessary step in lactation. Buffalo can give birth at any time in the year with no set mating periods. They generally have pregnancies that last between 305 and 320 days, just shy of a full year. While humans have found efficient ways to speed up buffalo breeding, they naturally produce two calves every three years on average. With this knowledge, farmers will often continue milking the lactating buffalo alongside their baby calves for an extended period of time. They generally get milk twice a day with their infants nearby to ensure the milk will be let down. For those intrigued by the concept, buffalo actually produce twice as much butter fat as a cow would during their milking period. Buffalo milk is used in all sorts of household products, from butter to cheese and even infant formula. Since these food items are so valuable, it isn't much of a surprise that humans will stimulate their development at a faster than natural rate. Again, much like cows, the buffalo also have a man-made procedure of artificial insemination. This allows farmers to pick and choose when and how often the female buffalo can get pregnant without any delays. Although controversial, it's a very common practice that's been going on for years. <laughs> the Solo Tigress If you've ever witnessed a litter of kittens being born, these next clips may not be very surprising. The majestic tigress has a lot in common with our smaller feline friends, but the difference in size is very noticeable. A pregnant tigress may not actually be noticeably pregnant for most of her gestation period. The entire period only lasts from 90 to 110 days, but the pregnancy really only becomes apparent in the final two weeks. This is when the tigress is most vulnerable, primarily because she won't have anyone to comfort or provide for her. While the lioness may have a pack to support her, female tigers usually handle their pregnancies on their own. The short pregnancy period is likely an evolutionary trait to help the tigress survive while giving birth, allowing for the parent to jump in and out of action for food and shelter when needed. A tigress will often give birth to a litter of tiger infants, generally two to four. But on occasion, there have been records of seven tiger cubs while in captivity. That poor tiger mom must have her work cut out for her. But thankfully, tigers in sheltered areas have much easier access to the resources they need. So, these cutie cubs will likely live into full adult lives. <coughs> gorillas are sort of distant cousins. So far on our list, gorillas may be the closest to our own species in the steps of giving birth. Like humans, gorillas can give birth during any season of the year, day or night. They also occasionally get morning sickness like humans and may even crave unusual diets near the end of their pregnancy. Some gorillas show signs of pregnancy in their latter stages, but many may not show any signs because of their naturally large stomachs. They rarely give birth to twins, sticking mostly to one baby gorilla per pregnancy, but they do have a 40% mortality rate for newborns. 
with the ability to reproduce only every four years. Female gorillas may only have one surviving offspring every six to eight years of their life. While in captivity, things are a bit different. For one, many female gorillas in zoos or parks are on birth control. This is intentionally done to not disturb the natural order in an otherwise unnatural environment with a predetermined hierarchy. After each gorilla is well established in the community and daily rituals take form, the staff will begin to decide which gorillas are ready for mating and reproducing. For the most part, gorillas don't change very much when getting ready to give birth. It isn't until after the birth of a newborn gorilla that the mother and child are taken care of. The community will do what it can to protect and defend their newest member, although this is much easier to accomplish in captivity rather than in the wild. A Comfortable Lioness We have already gone over what's unique about the powerful tigress giving birth, but now we'll take a look at what the lioness goes through. Because lions stick to prides or a tribe of distinct lions that they won't separate from, the lioness is only offered a very small pool of male candidates. In the wild, the lioness will only give birth no more than once every two years. This is mostly out of concern for food and resources, which will often be scarce in their natural environments. But a lioness in captivity is a completely different story. With food brought in regularly and no need for hunting, the lioness can have a new cub once every year. Their gestation period of pregnancy will last around 108 days with a litter size of one to six cubs, but they generally produce two to four baby lions. Like the tigress and many other cat-like creatures, the lioness will find a secluded area to give birth to her litter. This can be hidden in bushes or cave dens, but while in captivity, the lioness will tend to find a patch of straw or some sort of comfort to nest the newborns in. <laughs> The Independent Gazelle A gazelle is seen as a graceful creature, often leaping majestically to avoid being snatched up by their many natural predators. Of course, not much about pregnancy can be considered graceful and a gazelle in the wild will often have its own share of problems. If we start out with just the facts, the African gazelle has some of the most research put into their reproduction habits. These gazelles will begin conception from the young age of 150 to 720 days, or roughly a half year to two years old. Once pregnant, their gestation period for the smaller species will typically last less than 170 days, while the larger species of gazelle may reach over 200 days. The male gazelle in a group is usually very territorial and will try to protect its female and offspring. Their mating rituals will begin in early winter, but can technically start at any point of the year if there's an abundance of food available. Other than that, the gazelle will spend most of their time frolicking and eating as they normally do. When given the option, the pregnant gazelle may dine a bit more on vegetation to support their soon-to-be-born offspring, but they often have to keep moving and stay alert due to incoming predators. When they do eventually give birth, the mother will find an isolated area and remain there for several weeks until the youngling can start taking care of itself. The Prickly Worries of a Pregnant Hedgehog While some people may have the idea that hedgehogs are cool, blue, and incredibly fast, this next subject on hedgehog births may not be easy to come to terms with. The ideal age for a mature hedgehog to start mating is around the two-year mark. They can technically get pregnant only five months after being born themselves, but that's pretty premature for most of the species. You can tell when a female hedgehog is pregnant if she shows a few noticeable symptoms. If there is an increased appetite, a shift in eating routine, new weight gain, and if the hedgehog starts frequently building nests, there is a good chance your little rodent pal could be pregnant. The gestation period is relatively short, with the pregnancy only lasting 30 to 40 days, but they only breed in the months of springtime. If you're expecting little hedgehoglets, they'll typically arrive at the end of summer. Childbirth for a hedgehog mother is often short and simple, ranging anywhere from two minutes of labor to several hours. Sometimes it even occurs quietly in the night, away from any prying eyes. The best advice for taking care of baby hedgehogs is to simply leave the mother alone. There are known cases where the mother will get extremely irritated and hostile right after giving birth and may accidentally bite or even eat her young shortly after. 
Just make sure that you give her everything she needs and nothing more if you want to ensure a healthy young pack of adorable prickly friends. The Delayed Birth of Sea Lions Despite the name, there are only so many similarities between a regular lion and a sea lion. The reproduction isn't based on food supply, but rather a synchronized annual cycle. The female sea lion will tend to give birth in May or June, but will conceive regularly in July. This means that the gestation period runs around 11 to 11 and a half months runs around This means that the gestation period runs around 11 to 11 and a half months every year. As of now, scientists agree that the California sea lion has something called a delayed implantation. What that means is that the fertilized egg from the female sea lion will divide into a hollow ball of cells and stop growing to float freely in the sea lion's uterus for about three months. Once that time is passed, the egg will develop naturally and the offspring will start to grow as intended. Although there are still plenty of studies on why this delayed implantation occurs, scientists have currently accepted one solid answer. That is, that the body is determining whether the natural conditions of the environment are suitable for a baby sea lion to thrive in. That's a unique feature that we still don't know a lot about. Other aquatic animals have similar functions, but sea lions are a type of marine mammal. They're excluded from most of the mysteries of the ocean deep. The Rough Reproduction of Rhinos Hopefully, you aren't tired of animal births yet because now we're about to dive into the tough and durable species of rhino moms. Rhinos are the largest of the parasodactyles, which, despite the name, has no relation to any flying dinosaurs. It's actually the same category of hoofed mammals as the zebra and horses, but even with their class type similarity, rhinoceros have a very low reproductive rate. Unlike the many young species of animals giving birth early, the rhino won't be able to conceive until they've reached at least six years of age, the gestation period is also a bit on the long side, taking up to 16 months in most rhino species. Sometimes the birth of a rhino calf may actually take up to four and a half years, which can be quite the challenge for a pregnant mom in the wild. A pregnant rhino held in captivity at the Buffalo Zoo gave birth after 488 days of pregnancy. The male one-horned calf that was produced weighed in at a stunning 123 pounds right after coming out of his mom. Because of the ongoing threat of poachers, this male rhino is the third product of artificial insemination at this particular zoo. While it's amazing that life will continue to find ways to survive, it's unfortunate that many rhinos cannot safely reproduce in their natural environment today. <laughs> the dangers behind donkeys There are often warnings given to people who wish to breed donkeys. They're a difficult animal to take care of, and because of their usefulness as strong traveling animals, many organizations are dedicated to taking care of these mistreated animals used for profit. That being said, there are also many places that take care of donkeys naturally and with the intention of reproducing on their own. Donkeys are pregnant for an average of 11 to 14 months. During this time, they generally won't change any of their routines, making it difficult to even know that they could be expecting a newborn but changes in their environment could stir stress and cause complications. When there's only a month left of gestation, preparations will need to be made to assist the process. A nesting location is important and should be planned out in advance so there won't be any unfortunate mishaps. A stable with straw and something comfortable is ideal. The mother will also need time to develop antibodies to the birthing location, making preparation all the more important. Once they're fully and ready, the pregnant mare will likely become restless, rolling around and stretching in what some people call donkey aerobics. From there, the process is natural and quick, possibly taking up to 40 minutes for the foal to be born. It isn't recommended for humans to step in, unless there's an emergency, in which case the donkey mother will likely appreciate the extra help. A squirrel's litter of kittens are these squirrel babies cute to you? Opinions may vary, but all babies are a natural part of the circle of life and these squirrels, though smaller, are no exception. Squirrel babies are referred to as kittens, although they definitely don't resemble cats, even as they grow. Female squirrels have multiple ovulation cycles each year, with only one day during each cycle where they can conceive. In general terms, their breeding season will last from December to late August, 
but the primary factor is whether they're in a safe environment and if there's an abundance of food. The mother squirrel will build a sturdy space for giving birth, while the male does not tend to get involved with any portion of the process. There are many breeds of squirrel that come from very different environments, so knowing all there is to know about a squirrel pregnancy can get difficult. We do know that red squirrels will have a gestation of 36 to 42 days and produce an offspring of four infants, or kittens, although there are cases of seven kittens being born at once. Like most pregnant mammals, the mother squirrel will also gain weight during their pregnancy, allowing their stomach to noticeably grow. Their bodies work extra hard during this time and their limbs and tails may even change shape slightly. And for those extra curious, a female squirrel, unlike a cat and more like a human, has two nipples to feed their young with. So, now you know. Monkeys learn over the years. While we aren't going to start discussing humans before giving birth, we've moved on from gorillas and are about to finish this topic with our truly closest mammal relative, the monkey. In this example, one group of researchers spent 10 years observing wild gelata monkeys in this high-altitude grassland of Ethiopia. They learned a lot during this period, but were only able to witness 15 daytime births during the decade of observation. Monkeys and apes tend to give birth at night to allow the mother to rest and recover before having to participate in group travel. They often move locations to find more food and avoid predators, so having a mobile mother is an essential part of their livelihood. The idea that these monkeys under observation had so many daytime births could indicate that they felt at ease, whether it was due to their observation or a change in their environment. The research could mean a lot for future studies and the comforts of an animal giving birth. The researchers believe that the monkeys learn new habits over time to ease the burdens and have incorporated their lessons over the generations. Unlike with humans, however, the primate family did not make the effort to be supportive for each other during these birthing sessions. The mother would often be on her own as it became evident she was giving birth. With no one to help, she would simply handle the process by herself. Other members of her group likely understood the situation, but continued to hunt and gather without any intention of getting involved. For some dads and extended family members, maybe it isn't so different after all. And there you have it. Are you still with us after watching all of these animals give birth? Hopefully you learned a thing or two about the miracle of life and what separates us humans from the rest of the animal kingdom. There are still many things to learn about animals giving birth but for now, we'll have to settle with what we've covered on today's list. Mm -hmm.